We're back with Jackie Parasek and her wonderful bathing assistant and husband, Jerry Parasek. Yep, they double team and handle the Shelties in their 2Js breeding program for almost 30 years now. While she grooms, he bathes. Sounds like a perfect arrangement to me. And she has definitely learned some fabulous grooming tips that she's going to share with all of us, like how thinning shears can be used in a multitude of ways and will be your new best friend. So hang tight. He is the brains and I'm the beauty. You asked and I listened. I have been filming a stockpile of more grooming episodes and they're all filled with so many cool tips and techniques that can be used on tons of different breeds. So comment below with what breeds you'd like to see. Like and share this video with your friends and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and ring that little bell so you don't miss one episode. Yeah. This is my job. So you better I'm go in. Bath. Let me go warm it up, okay? <laughs> While Jerry warms the bath, Jackie brushes out the coat because wet tangles, guess what? They don't come out. Let me repeat that. Wet tangles and mats don't come out. So brush them before you bathe them. And when you bathe them, start with the whites. Keeping the whites whites with shimmering highlights. Huh, maybe that should be a new song, right? And don't forget it actually needs to sit on the coat longer. Hence, that's why you start there. The key to bathing a double coated breed is to get them very, very, very wet. Because guess what? Their coat repels water. That's what it is supposed to do. So to get to the skin alone, you have to saturate it completely. Again. Yeah, I mean, oh my gosh, yeah. To get to the skin. To get to the skin. Alone. Yeah. Very, 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 very wet. Once you get the shimmering highlights worked in, then you work in the rest of the body with either Dawn or Thick and Thicker. A good towel dry, wringing off the majority of the sitting water, and then it's back to the kennel to blow dry. If you've heard it once on my channel, you've heard it a thousand times. You never brush a dry coat. So, using your pin brush along with Crown Royal mixed with water in a nice mister bottle, now you can brush away. So we're, we are spraying the dog down as you brush it for hair. For, so yes, you don't have a hair. I'm separating his hair after his bath. And you are using just a Oops. regular pin brush? Yep, just a pin brush. And this is just to get the hair to lay when it dries so it's not just crazy everywhere. He has a very harsh coat, so... It would look like a bad, really bad hairdo if you didn't put something put in something it when in. you dry it. So I just put a little bit, not a lot. I'm using a mister. That's a nice mister. Sally's beauty supply. Yes. Is it Sally's? Really? Yes. And of course, when way it's Sally's, cheaper. it's way cheaper than when it's a, and, oh yeah. Well, and what people need to remind, remember too, is that when they're brushing their shell teeth or any double coated breed at home, they should moisten the coat. Moisten the coat. Then do you do recommend Crown Royal? Crown Royal. Or you can, I mean, you can even use any kind of leave-in conditioner and just dilute it. Infusium is Infusium. very good. Okay. Um, any kind of, there's so many leave-in products now that you For can use. humans? For humans, yep. I mean, there are a lot in the dog world as well, but your average person isn't going to be going to a dog show to get stuff to brush out there. Right. Whether you are showing your Sheltie on the show circuit or they are couch loving pets, this breed should be brushed out at least once a week. Because if you don't, then the hair clumps together and then that's where you get mats. It gets to the skin, they get wet, then they get staph infections and skin issues and things like that. So if you just quickly, five minutes, right, brush through them, or after they got rained on, brush if they, if they get wet, you want to brush, you want, yeah. yeah. You also want to, at least once a week, brush the hair. They have very different textured hair behind their ears, which you'll see when it's drier, mm -hmm. that likes to clump. And some dogs will clump up in a day or so behind their ears, which then grows and creates giant mass, mats, which then pull on their Right. The hair and their skin, and it's uncomfortable for them. Well, I was going to say, I have, a, I have certain chihuahuas in my line that the ear is, it, the, the ear hair is worse. Is It, it mats yeah. like instantly. And then it's time to blow dry. 
She starts by getting the majority of the sitting water blown off the top. So you want to dry from the skin out. That way you use the dryer itself to create a part, exposing the skin, and then you use a brush to dry the coat. So yes, blow down to the skin. Start at the root and work your way out. And once you get all that water out, that's when you start to use the brush and blow the coat into the direction that you want it to lay. In this breed, you want it to lay down flat. When you dry the front of the dog, start at the bottom, basically the lower part of the chest and then work up. With this breed, you blow the chest coat up and then you comb it down. For the undercarriage, yep, you hold up those front legs like you would changing a human baby diaper and then brush and blow away. Easy peasy. Another double coated dog tip, working from the root out allows you to make sure that you can find any possible clumps or mat because you need to work it out. Leaving a dog wet or damp will only create these mats. Use the pin brush while you're blowing them dry and work out any of those clumps. It's best to get them out now than later. In just about any long coated breed, double or not, those hairs behind the ears, ah, total little buggers, notoriously matting, especially with a force dryer. So you work through them carefully and demat as you go along. One of the keys to grooming this breed is to separate the coat. Seriously, you are constantly brushing to separate the coat. Using your pin brush on the body, brush the coat in the direction it grows. That would be down. And then on the neck and around the head, you're brushing up and out to separate. And with a double coated breed, getting down to the skin with that brush is extremely important. Like it has to be done on the regular. Because especially for show grooming, the more you separate it, the bigger it is, the bigger it, the better right. it looks. Consistently brushing the coat down to the skin. It's going to eliminate those clumps and mats and the issues. And that's why most handlers that show Shelties only show Shelties. The Sheltie has this coat. Why does the breed have that? In Scotland and such, it's wet, it's damp. Okay. So this is really just their coat and their coarseness and their denseness is to repel water and it shouldn't really get burrs and things like okay. that to stick to it. To it, okay. Um, because they're in rough terrain, they're in rocks, they're, right. they're in mountains, you know, running around chasing their ducks and their sheep. Years ago, dogs didn't have coat like this. And we're, this breed is actually getting to the point, my dogs included, some of them, that have too much too coat. Much coat. And you tend, I mean, even for show, you lose, you lose the dogs, you lose the balance, you, you lose all the shape in the cup in the dog of the dog in all this hair so you can't really see you have to like put your hands you have to put your hands on the dog to yeah. see what's what's under there yeah but it didn't used to be that way it's a breed that requires an understanding of the coat and that it takes a lot of time and a lot of work and guess what no matter how often you comb brush slicker and tend to this coat it can still mat that's when the thinning shears come into play. So there's a little knot here from blow drying. So we're gonna take the thinning shears and we're gonna kind of clip into it so we don't leave a big hole there. And then it's gonna make it much easier to comb out. Ta-da, it's gone. No drama. Because in all honesty, even though it's a herding breed, it's also a head breed. And in the confirmation world, that means its head gets judged like, I don't know, big time. So she's going to start with grooming the ears. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to look. I'm going to run my thumb, okay, mm -hmm. in the inside with a little pressure so I can feel where the skin is. Now, if you have a dog that's ears stand up, you want to leave more hair on the ears. If you have a dog with nice ears that tip, you can take them a little bit closer. So I keep my thumb there on the inside so I don't chop off my dog's ear. I can feel, I have total control, and I can feel where the leather is. So I'm not going to slice their ears open. Then you can do the same thing on this side. You can put your thumb on the very end of the leather, brush it up, 
Now all I'm gonna do is, is neaten. I always use thinning shears on their ears um, to trim this off. And I'm just gonna kinda go straight across. You don't wanna do too short up here. So you want it to look soft and like velvet. Even on your little couch potatoes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. So the ear is supposed to tip? Tip, okay. yes, the ear should tip. There's different amounts of, of tip, and I will go back just because these little hairs are sticking out now with my thinning shears. And I'm just gonna neaten all that, clean it all out. So all these little hairs in here. And everybody has their amount that they like to take out in there. I like to make it look, look like it to look clean. So there's the beginning, just the beginning. Can you oh, see yeah. the difference? Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. So now I am going to I brush see, this. I was gonna say that little tiny yeah. Brush this back. And where about the break is. Okay. In the ear. I'm gonna hold it up. Uh -huh. I'm gonna neaten some of this. Just neaten. I'm not gonna go down to the close. I'm just neatening all these little hairs up so it looks clean and groomed. Okay, so you can see the difference oh, that yeah. we're starting to slowly get. Now I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do the same thing. And I'm gonna stay with my so mm -hmm. yep and you want the essence of the shelty expression should be soft and it should just melt your heart when you look at it nothing should be glaring or harsh so just that's everything in the trim job should be soft. It should all just flow. It shouldn't be chopped. Gotcha. I tend to leave, which people don't have to do on their, their dogs if they don't want to. If this coat behind them, uh -huh. behind the ear, is too much for people to maintain and to make sure that it's, it's always getting brushed out for fear they get a big mat so they don't get a big mat, you can take your thinning shears and you can just kind of run down here and you can just neaten that neaten up. up. I'm not going to do a lot because I like not that he's going to a dog show anytime soon, <laughs> but I like to, I like it to be soft and I like it all to just bl blend. Some people want to take this back here down, but I think from the side when it's left longer, it again, it, the lines are smooth and flowing. And at home, if you have dogs at home and this hair gets really greasy and it tends to want a mat, you can take baby powder or baby powder with talc. Okay. And you can put just a little bit in there and brush or comb it and it'll absorb the oils and it'll help it from getting knotted. Very cool. For show, of course, we trim the whiskers. And a nice curved shear or even a straight shear will work just fine. Snippity snip 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 away you go. So cleaning up the lip line when you're showing. You want to get this all clean so that it makes your lip line look smooth. Trimming back a little bit farther, you can give the illusion of having a little bit slightly longer head. I'm gonna trim down here. I always trim my dogs down there. Just cleans it up. To, I mean, yeah. yeah. To clean it up and to, so you can see more of their, hopefully, lack of depth of head. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that cleared, that cleaned it up, like. A lot. A lot. And just I go that in. I always do it with thinning shears. I would never, unless you're very experienced with scissors, go in here and do this with a straight shear, especially by the jugular vein there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then just go through and clean it up some more.
I'm doing it so you can see, once again, when a judge will, is going to look at the profile oh. of the head, it's hard. You don't, you can, but you don't want to have to push all this hair back. You can just, when you can just look like. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I can see the, I mean, I can see the difference already. And a dog, in my opinion, equal parts, equal parts, very little depth of head. You'll see some that will be like a triangle on the side. Okay. I, that is not, to me, that is not the ideal. The ideal to me is that it should be all one piece, smooth, going back. Everything fits together. Yeah. No lumps and bumps anywhere. This dog's head is going to continually get better. He's not even quite two yet. He's very soft, soft expression, beautiful eye, dark mm -hmm. eye. This is cholesterol. I'm going to use a little tiny bit, which I probably have a little too much, on my hands. Your mayo. Yeah. standard mayo. <laughs> and I'm going to put a little salt rings on my hand just to get it a little moist. I'm going to touch its head. I am going to then put my baby powder. I think it just helps to keep the hair laying down. For when you trim. When you trim, okay. So get it in there. You can also see where the hair is standing up, where it's not. And as you can see, the hair, what I was talking about with the ears, look at it, it's already. Yep, yeah, it's already. It's already started. starting, so. And just mix it in there. It'll really help with that. Fuller's Earth is a mineral powder Boy, that, that you can sense. put behind their ears. You can order it online and you can put it in there and it will also help take care of that oily, greasy. It's much coarser than baby powder. A lot of people like it, have used it for years. So I'm gonna frame up his face a little bit just so I can see what the hair is doing. I'm gonna brush it back. Now, I already did the lip line and all that stuff. I'm going to brush his little muzzle up, all the hair up, so it's... You can see what you're, yeah, yeah, what you're working with. and it's with. thick and plush. And his little stop, because that's one of the places you're going to trim. I never do any trimming, really, on the muzzle. Now, I'm going to take my thinning shears, and I am going to go in behind, and I'm going to take one little clip, because see, we can see all this hair mm -hmm. that's in there that is just kind of out of control. I only do one clip in each spot. Don't do two if you have thinning shears, or you're going to wind up with a error like that when I got my new scissors. Now, as you can see, that's already looking better. Yep. So, but I'm going to... So go back and kind of lift it up with my thinning shear and take another one because you want it to all be clean and smooth now another little trick to get that because i still see some top hair you take the opposite side mm -hmm. and you open up your scissors and you just kind of rake that undercoat out ah, it's like a stripping tool yep exactly some people use the little blocks and such too. They work great too. I just you've got it there. You've already you already have it out. Yeah, it's just adding one more thing to the plethora. So I just use these. Now you can see from the side, it's yep. looking way better, oh, yeah. way cleaner in there. Okay, so now I'm going to do the top skull considered the top skull. Now, it looks very hairy from here. I am not gonna take these heavy duty thinning shears. I'm gonna take these, which take a lot out, but won't 
there's bigger tooth, bigger space. Right. So it takes out, doesn't take out take quite out as aggressively. And then I'm going to brush it down. And then I'm going to brush it up again. We'll do see it all over. Yeah, it. see where and check it. I see back here, there's still a lot there that I don't want. And I'm not going to go all the way to the skin. I'm just going to take the bulk out. So when it lays down, it lays. Yep. Okay, so even when we lift it up, we want this to blend, so we don't want to take all that. Okay, so you want to blend right in. As it should all be smooth. It shouldn't go. And when we're looking, after we finish trimming this, we'll look and we can see where you can feel where the where his ears and his back skull and all that. Okay. And, oh. and I'm going to go in against the skull and take some of this bulk out. Now I'm going in under the ears and I'm going back here. Okay. I'm going to take one clip. See how it's, yeah. it's all blending, blending in. together versus this. Right. Yeah. No, you can definitely see the difference. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go right to the bottom of his ear. I'm going to slide these in. There we go. It's cleaned up. It's smooth. Everything blends together. Now we're going to go back in and I'm going to put some color makeup on his little mask because when you take off all that hair, you lose all the black. Okay. So you wouldn't leave it like that when you went into the ring. It should be black up there? It should be colored in a little bit. I'm not saying paint it on. Right, right. It should be soft. But when you do any kind of trimming, you change you, the color. Yeah, well, yeah. So you have to put something back in so it looks Correct. Correct. This is just one of the many that you can use. I put my mask stuff on with a toothbrush. Oh. And all I want to really do is just kind of just do the top here a little bit. Okay. Just to make it look like the rest. Um, I don't like when they're painted on super yeah. dark. I think that it makes them look harsh, but again, everybody has their own preferences how what they think looks good. Right. I guess I'm getting to be to the. I've been in Shelties so long and grooming Shelties. I guess I'm starting to be one of the old people now, and I haven't changed my your style. Your, my style. your style. Right. This is the way I do it, and this is the way I've been doing it, and. I don't like, I don't like extreme. Right. Oh, difference. Like. And extreme grooming. And you have to do this a few times. Um, you almost need to let it dry a little bit. Now we'll leave that to dry. About how long would it take for that to dry? Maybe 10 minutes. Oh, minutes. okay. It's not that long. If you're outside and you're grooming, and there's a little breeze, not long not ago. Long ago. <laughs> After all of that head business, and of course, totally cool tips and techniques, now it's time for chalking. For today's demonstration, she worked on the head first, and that's because it's such an intricate part of the process. Normally, she would actually chalk first, because that allows you to see the coat standing so you can see exactly what needs to be trimmed. So. So you're using the self rinse as um, your yes. as your why do you why have you chosen self rinse? I typically always bathe my dogs before every show. They don't I don't ever go in between right? dog shows and not bathe. Um, I know a lot of people don't think that they need to be bathed that much, but we always have bathed our dogs completely before a show. Um, a lot of people will use the self rinse on their feet and on their whites. Because it does have some whitening properties in it. If they've been walking through a parking lot or on the ground at the dog show, you can go back the second day. You don't have to bathe them every day in a cluster or whatever. Right. Um, but you can go back through the morning before you show and self-rinse them. Take your towel, you know, let it 
work it in there, take the towel. You don't get any dirt that really hasn't been set, set. in, but it's just sitting there making them look grungy. Right, gotcha. Spray with that. I'm gonna work this chalk, mayonnaise. The mayonnaise. <laughs> into, uh, into their coat. That's what's gonna hold the, hold the chalk hold in. Hold the chalk in. And a, a little moisture with the mayonnaise is good. <laughs> Remember we talked about not really brushing them when right. they're bone dry all the time. Especially if you, you know, you really wanna take care of your dog's coat. You don't wanna be ripping it all out doing damage. Someone's gonna think you guys are actually talking about me. And it is. <laughs> this one actually thinks he's probably really going to a dog. <laughs> Where am I going? When do I get to go? So I'm just packing the chalk in. Pack get get in a nice, there. make the hair stand up. I and take my just, little yeah. soft brush. This yep. is like a actual chalk brush. Some people use like, um. Uh, people used to, I think they called them potato brushes or something way back when, before we had all these special brushes. Special brushes. brushes. I'd already put my, my yep. little chalk in his, now we're going to put it at the skin. At the skin, okay. Just, I mean, it's only there, really, to whiten and to help it stand out. All right. Another expert tip. If you are show grooming, you need to get that chain collar on there before you start working the rough. So, slip it on there and get it in place before you chalk. And most definitely before you start backcombing, which we will get to in a bit. The best ratter in my family is Jared. Oh, okay. It's his favorite job. Yeah. He likes rough. Like, that's his specialty. It's the rough? Okay. It's to get their roughs up. Okay. He literally will spend a half an hour just on grooming the rough. Wow. So that every hair is separated and teased up. So, okay, as a person, I, I don't know if you saw it on Facebook, I, I shared my high school graduation photo uh -huh. from 1988. Yes. With hair as large as this. Yeah. And I ratted the crap out of it. So my question is, I knew what it took to get it out. How do you get it out of a dog's coat? I brush it out. You brush it out. Aww. Yeah, we brush it out and we, um, it comes out fairly. Does it? Yeah. The only time there's some ratting stuff that we was pretty popular for a while. And it's hard. If you use that. You, it's, yeah, it's brutal. Well, I mean, I was, I'm, I'm assuming that that would damage the coat. Yeah, you, typically when they've been at a show and they've been getting really, really, really ratted and sprayed, when they come home, they have to get it all made. Yeah, out. yeah. And that's where you're probably conditioning, deep conditioning yeah. and all that stuff. Okay. And I don't really, once my dogs are in coat, I don't really ever condition them. Oh, okay. Um... They just don't seem to need it. I mean, they should have a coarse coat. The last thing you want is a soft coat. A soft coat. coat. So, you know, if they're, they've been sunburned or they've been sitting out for a while and their coat's just poor. Right. That, then or that's they're in the thing. heat a lot. Right. But, you know, in the south here, our dogs, they're in every day when it's hot. They yeah. go out. Our dogs go out at night in the summer. And we're going to brush all this out with our slicker brush. Okay. We're going to brush it all out. We're going to go up, brush it all out so that you don't really feel. Or should they go when poof? Poof. Yeah, no, wipe. no poof. Right. Unless, of course, you're showing to my husband. Oh, okay. And then. He's totally okay with that. He's totally okay with that. So please poof away. <laughs> now, this I'm going to brush down. Okay. To keep his hair down. After I get the chalk primarily out, the thing that you want to look at when you're trimming. So see all this hair that's sticking out underneath all this right. bib? Right. And when they run, it's gonna right. be it's gonna be what I said before. Distracting. Right. Distracting. So you can take and just 
Go with your thinning shears and slightly, and clean, slightly that. clean that up and just kind of bring it down. Okay. Another tip, if your dog has a wide front, their elbows stick out. Stick out. Okay. This dog has a, has a nice front. Right. Um, but a lot of them will have a wide front. You don't want to leave all the hair here. Just make it, it's going to make it look it's even wider. Accentuate what you don't want to accentuate. So you're going to go in and you're going to trim some of that out. Like I said, everything should be smooth. Right. And you want to go in from behind and just take some of that elbow hair out and look. Oh, that's a huge difference. But that's going to make it look smoother. Smoother. Not have any hair flying in the way yep. and distracting huge people. Huge difference. And now that we've got all that chalk in place and the extra trims and extra cuts taken care of, now it's time to get out that comb and tease away. Those of us girls that were in high school in the 80s, yeah. I'd say we're more of an expert in this than anyone else out there. It is a true art, peeps. What you want to do is start brushing up. Okay. Brushing everything forward because everything from where, te technically, you want to feel their shoulder blade. Okay. Here's his shoulders. And you want to go forward. So what you're going to do is you're going to just start ratting. Some people do it this way. Some people do it. I mean, it all just depends how much you want to do. Personal preference. Yeah, once again. But you want it all forward and up so that it softens and fringes their faces. So... Here's what we're looking for. All this up, up. Down, so it down. should it it should frame his face. His face. And there you have it. A beautifully groomed Sheltie, taught and demonstrated by one of the most revered and respected in the breed. And again, if you've watched it all the way through to the end, you have learned cool tips and techniques to be used on just about any breed. Most definitely one that is double coated. So, I am truly grateful and honored to have been able to share it all with you. Thank you so much, Jackie. And of course, Jerry. I'm, I'm, I have it on. She has to but have it. She has to voice over IP it. Voice over IP. <laughs> I'm at work again, okay? Yes. It's like.